Greetings, sky watchers, and welcome to the sky above us. I'm James Albury, and I'm your tour guide to the night sky. We have three must-see celestial events happening over the next two weeks, and depending on where you live, you can potentially see all three of them. What am I talking about? Let me show you. First, we have the close approach of Venus to the planet Saturn. Venus and Saturn are positioned in such a way in the solar system right now that from Earth's perspective, they'll appear to pass right next to each other in the sky. Okay, we have our sky set for around 6.45 p.m. your local time on January 22nd, facing west. The two planets will appear in the constellation Aquarius the Water Bearer less than 21 arc minutes away from each other. That means you'll be able to see both planets at the same time through the wide-angle eyepiece of a telescope. What is an arc minute, you ask? Well, an arc minute is a unit of measure astronomers use when measuring the angular separation of objects in the sky. We divide the sky into degrees, minutes, and seconds. There are 60 arc seconds in one arc minute and 60 arc minutes in one degree of arc. For comparison's sake, our moon is approximately 30 arc minutes in width. We also refer to that as being one full moon width or half degree of separation. Mizar and Alcor, the visual binary at the bend of the handle in the Big Dipper, have 12 arc minutes of separation. Jupiter and Saturn had only half that at six arc minutes of separation during their great conjunction in 2020. So, with Venus and Saturn appearing less than 21 arc minutes away from each other, that's going to be something you don't want to miss. Next is the occultation of Mars on the evening of January 30th. An occultation is when the Moon passes directly in front of another celestial object, usually a planet, a star, or an asteroid. It's like an eclipse, but the Moon is blocking something other than the Sun. Because the Moon is so small compared to the Earth, and Mars is so far away, your viewing location is very important. If you're in the right spot, you'll get to see the Moon pass directly in front of Mars. Otherwise, you'll only see the Moon appear really close to Mars. The occultation itself will be visible from the southern United States, all of Mexico and Central America, the Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, Colombia, and Venezuela. The timing of the occultation is dependent on your location, and you'll need to adjust your time zone accordingly. From Gainesville, Florida, the occultation begins at 12.42 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the morning of January 31st. The occultation itself will last 34 minutes and end at 1.16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you miss this occultation of Mars, the next one visible from the contiguous United States won't happen until January 14th, 2025. But never fear, we have a rare daytime occultation of Jupiter in just a few months. We'll talk more about that as we get closer to that date. Lastly, we have Comet C 2022 E3 ZTF. I know, the name is absolutely dreadful, but hey, here we go. Comet C-2022 E3 ZTF is a long-period comet that was discovered by the Zwicky Transient Facility on March 2, 2022. The E3 designation means that it was the third comet discovered in the beginning of March that year. The ZTF stands for Zwicky Transient Facility. This comet is calculated to have an inbound orbital period of approximately 50,000 years. I know, right? It reached perihelion, its closest approach to the Sun, on January 12, 2023, at a distance of a little over one astronomical unit, or 166 million kilometers. An astronomical unit is the average distance between Earth's orbit and the Sun, and that's the standard way astronomers measure distances within the solar system. The comet's closest approach to Earth will be on February 1st, 2023, at a distance of only 0.28 astronomical units, or 42 million kilometers. This should be good for our ability to see the comet. However, comets are notoriously fickle when it comes to how bright they appear. This is mostly because comets vary in their size, composition, 
and distance from both Earth and the Sun. Comets are leftovers from the formation of the solar system. They're mostly found in the region beyond the planet Neptune, and the nucleus of a comet is a lumpy collection of water ice, frozen gases, and rocks. If their position in their orbit is disturbed, they'll fall towards the Sun. The trip can take hundreds or even thousands of years. In the early part of the comet's journey, it's almost impossible to see the comet when it's that far away from the Sun. However, once a comet nucleus crosses the orbit of Jupiter, the Sun's heat begins melting the ice and frozen gases. This forms an atmosphere around the comet nucleus. We call that a coma. By the time the comet reaches the orbit of Mars, the solar wind pushes the comet's coma away from the nucleus, forming the comet's tail. The word comet is derived from the Greek words kometis asteris, which means hairy star. Given the orbital dynamics of this comet, astronomers expected to get brighter than magnitude 6 and thus become visible with the naked eye. Now, be prepared. Magnitude 6 is the dimmest object you can see with the naked eye, and you must be where it's extremely dark, basically away from city lights. To understand what I mean by magnitude, this is the scale astronomers use to measure the relative brightness of astronomical objects. In this case, we're talking about apparent magnitude. It's a unitless value that varies logarithmically, such that a star of magnitude 1 is 100 times brighter than a sixth magnitude star. On this scale, each step in magnitude is 2.512 times brighter than the magnitude value above it, and vice versa. For comparison, Venus, the brightest planet in the sky, is at magnitude negative 3.9 this week, and Saturn is 0.7. The smaller the number, the brighter the object is. So Pluto, for example, is magnitude 15, and the Sun is negative 26. Therefore, if comet C2022E3ZTF only gets to, say, magnitude 5, you still won't be able to see it from most cities. It would need to be at least magnitude 2 for that to happen. So keep your fingers crossed, and let's hope it gets brighter than that. Now let's see where it will be in the sky at the end of this month. Okay, we have our sky set up for an hour after sunset on January 23rd facing north. Comet C2022E3ZTF's orbit brings it through several circumpolar constellations as it heads away from the sun. Because of this, from most locations in the northern hemisphere, the comet will be visible all night long. It will first appear as a faint smudge in the constellation Draco the Dragon. Then, as the nights tick by, it will transition into Ursa Major the Great Bear on January 25th and Camelopardalus the Giraffe on January 29th. The comet is expected to be at its brightest on February 1st when it's at perigee, its closest approach to Earth. On February 1st, the comet will become visible shortly after 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, reach its highest point in the sky shortly before 10.30 p.m., and it'll be lost in the morning twilight at 6.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully, it will be sporting a decently sized tail as it passes by. Ah, uh, one can only hope. All right, my friends, head outside and look for the conjunction of Venus and Saturn on January 22nd, the occultation of Mars by the Moon on the night of January 30th, and the appearance of Comet C 2022E3ZTF in late January, early February. Before you go, visit our website, theskyaboveus.org. From there, you can watch previous episodes, listen to the Sky Above Us podcast, get the Sky Above Us merchandise, and you can even ask me an astronomical question that I'll answer in a future episode. This year is turning out to be a busy one. You won't miss a thing, though, if you remember to keep looking up. I'm trying to be groovy and hip. Exactly, there it is. <laughs>